Hi, I'm Stephen with Alberta Urban Garden.ca. Welcome to my indoor grow room. So on today's episode, I'm going to talk about a couple of things. The first thing is transitioning your plants to, from a CFL or a artificial grow light to a window. The third thing I'm going to talk about is actually uh, dealing with fungus gnats and some of the pests. And then we're going to do an update on the pruning and actually prune back these monsters. I mean, it's not fully in frame yet. They're way up here already. So we'll do that third. Boop. Welcome to the jungle. So much like many of you, I ran out of space underneath my CFL grow lights. And I ran the, the LED for a month and it just cost a little too much in power for my liking. So what I did shortly after that is I moved some of these plants upstairs. Now the first thing though is the sun is very much more powerful than those, those LED lights. I mean the best grow lights in the world are only as good as the shadiest day ever uh, outside. So what I actually did is I had the blinds down and over a couple of days I, I hardened these off. It took a few days and what I did is I opened the blinds just a little bit more and a little bit more each time. And then after a while they were they were hardened off. I, lo I did lose some of the pepper leaves to, to sun scorch and, and a little bit of burning. But overall after the quick transition they, uh, they did quite well. When I did bring them up, I, I had a fungus gnat problem. Uh, there, there's no two doubts about it. There was tons of fungus gnats and they were driving me batty. So I attacked them in three different ways. The first way was using a little bit of Dawn soap in some water and watering them thoroughly. I know this will uh, definitely disrupt the beneficial microbes and stuff in there, but that also kills their eggs and their larvae so that they're not able to reproduce. And then every time you water after that for a short while, it'll get frothy again and kill them off again. The third thing that I did is I bought a bunch of these yellow sticky traps and they caught tons. Uh, I just put them in the soil and they, they caught tons, no problem. These alone just were not enough to, to keep up with it. And the third thing will come in a little closer and I'll explain it. So this is crushed glass. You can use other things, but this crushed glass provides a barrier so that the fungus gnats can't actually get down into the soil. So what fungus gnats feed on is the fungus that is quite literally on the soil. They don't typically harm the plant. It, well, I haven't noticed they've harmed the plant, but uh, they, they are really, really annoying. So what you want to do is you want to put a kind of a two centimeter uh, layer over the soil. This is not going to hurt the plant. This can go right out. It's inert. It's just glass but it prevents them from getting down and laying their eggs and their larvae from coming back up. When you do water, this will move around, but just wait for it to dry and then just like a coarse grain sand, you can uh, manipulate it and put it back to, to a nice uh, cover. You can um, recover this and I probably will try to recover it so that I can use it next year in the house. In deciding where to put your plants, you wanna pick a south or a southwest facing window that gets at least eight hours of sun. More is obviously preferable. Uh, for things like peppers and my olive tree is doing in there and the goji berries. Uh, but partial shade is, is okay for some things. So selecting where you place them. So I've got the peppers which need the most sun, the goji berries behind, and some, some things like my basil, which is in the shade almost completely behind. The basil uh, is likely to burn, so you just want to make sure that it's, it's a little protected. It still needs the light, but uh, it needs a little bit of protection so that it doesn't burn. And then prior to doing the pruning update, we're just gonna scroll up and up and up and up and up. See how tall those monsters are? These guys get a quarter turn uh, in the window so that they're not uh, running one way too much. They get a quarter turn every couple of days. And look how tall these beasts are. It's time to prune them back down and continue to work on the internal structure. So before we got to the pruning, I just wanted to show you the results of the previous pruning. This was that initial cut. Look at how bulky this thing is getting. It is nice and it's strong, and uh, it's really bulked up around the, the joints and where these new ones are coming out, and it continues to do that further up the plant. What you wanna be careful about though is letting things go to flower. Uh, right now in the house, we're just trying to get this thing to produce a good, healthy, strong plant. And uh, this fruit is, is taking away from that power. So what I'm actually gonna do, although it is large, and I'll probably actually eat this one, is I'm gonna take this fruit off. 
Um, that will force the plant to put more power into its plant development and after we prune it, it, it won't need to carry a fruit as well. Just to give you a perspective of how large these are, the container on the left is 12 inches or 30 centimeters tall and they are at least two feet if not more. I am very, very impressed with this pruning. It is turning out absolutely great. That said, it's time to hack. So my handy dandy Alberta Urban Garden uh, brand clippers and it's time to start hacking. So if you haven't seen my last few videos, I've done two videos on, on pruning these particular peppers. If you haven't seen them, I highly recommend going and taking a look. One of the things you're going to want to do, especially with these ones, is make sure that you're clipping down to a joint that's pointing away from the inside of the plant so it's not going to continue to shade the plant. And I think I found one here. It's pointing away, so hack. I know this looks dramatic, but it's well worth the plant's health. Um, I, I was told that you can try to root these and they take a couple of months to go, but I mean, I've got these two massive pepper bushes. I'm not really worried about uh, getting another pepper plant. And then we're just going to continue on. We've got uh, a lot of some, a lot of pretty brutal cuts to make. And you just want to make sure you uh, clip them and keep this plant healthy and growing the way that you want it to. It's such a jungle in here, they're tangled into each other. And by pruning and continuing to prune until these go outside, we're, we're continuing to strengthen these plants to make sure that they're the healthiest plant that they can be. And when I plant them in the ground, I'm just gonna let them go. Ooh, another big fruit. I have to come in here at least once a day and take these off because these little powerhouses, their root structure is getting going. They can produce this. I, last time I pulled flowers was two days ago. They can produce this in two days. And I'm not sure I missed this one. I'm, I'm assuming this isn't two days, but wow, I cannot believe it. So we're just gonna continue to hack and I'll show you the end result. Here we go. We're now down the pruning. So I've hacked them back down to a manageable level. I've tried to make sure that when they're shooting out, they're slant out as opposed to back in, so they're not self-shading. I've taken off all of the flowers and damaged leaves, and uh, we'll put them back in the window here. Uh, if I was to do this project again, I started these ones in September. If I was to do this again with a faster growing pepper, things like, uh, uh, this is a super Hungarian hot, both of these. They grow quite a bit quicker than, say, a habanero. If I was to do it with a faster growing pepper, I would probably wait until uh, December to plant them and then start to build this, because now I'm just maintaining them as low. I just basically hacked it all back. The root system is well developed and I'll continue to feed it and grow it, but by the time it goes outside, it'll be a massive thing again. Uh, scorpion peppers, uh, habanero peppers, they grow a little bit slower in my experience, so I'll probably start those in September and continue to build them. So I'm just going to put these back in the window, and remember, a quarter turn a day or every two days to make sure that they're not facing one way too much. Uh, you want to make sure, if you, especially if you've got the room closed off, you've got a fan in here just to help keep uh, disease off. I know I've got some... some uh, damage happening from something and I'm, I'm not sure what it is but when I have a little more information I'll, I'll definitely show you guys. Little white bumps on the bottom of these leaves and I'm not sure what that's from. It's not going through to the top yet but if you happen to know please let me know. Um, and we'll put these in. Uh, I continue to fertilize them with a 222 organic liquid kelp fertilizer. Uh, every uh, two weeks and that just keeps them them uh, nice and healthy and they've got some food in there and then when when we're ready to put them out I'll show you hardening off. Thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate it very much. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up and a subscribe. If you'd like to continue the conversation please join us on Google Plus and Facebook. Those links can be found in the, the uh, comment section below. Have a great day.